found it in the heart, although our uh, animals were exposed in the whole body condition. So uh, the fact that the steward type was the same was the thing that really drew our, our eye to it. And also, uh, there were some of the strongest uh, findings from a numerical standpoint in, in the incidence of the tumors that we found in our, in our animals. What would you warn people? And is there a panic about phone use? I don't think there's a panic about phone use. First of all, our studies are what are called hazard identification studies. So these studies are done to under conditions that, that in essence provide what would be considered an extreme exposure scenario to animals to, to, to reveal the potential for biological changes. Um, the losing, sorry, losing the. Uh, what was it the main question? I mean, question? What, what should just the general I'm public sorry, take yes, away from this? So there are a number of ways that one can use your phone that, that deliver, removes or uh, diminishes quite a bit the radio frequency radiation that you receive when you're holding the phone against your head. First of all, you can reduce the radio frequency radiation considerably by simply holding the phone slightly away from your head, which is what is recommended by the uh, uh, in the phone insert. When you, when you buy a phone, you can read the insert, and there's a recommended uh, distance that you keep the phone away from your ear. Otherwise, you can use uh, earbuds, you can use uh, just Holding your phone away from your body is, is the best way to, to reduce the radio frequency exposure. And what about radio pockets? frequency exposure? Well, that's that's a good question. And it's, it's really a good idea to not put your phone in your pocket, not put your phone next to your body. Leave a distance between the, uh, the phone and, and your body. So uh, uh, there are a number of ways of reducing exposure. And of course, uh, using the phone only for uh, making calls instead of just having it on all the time. John? Yeah, so I just want to make sure I understand the votes. They voted to that there is clear evidence of heart tumors in male rats, which previously was uh, some evidence. But they also voted some evidence where there was uh, where it was equivocal, and was that only f that was for males and females for brain tumors? Brain tumors. Right. So now that we have this says clear evidence for heart uh, tumors, or, uh, is it heart tumors or lesions? These are lesions of the nerve sheath mm -hmm. around nerves in the heart. So it's so cancerous it's a, growth. It's a cancerous growth of the nerve sheath, in essence. Okay. Um, and. So what happens next? These are recommendations by a panel, right? So this is taken up. Tell us what happens next and when does this become final? Who makes the final decision? Well, first of all, uh, we need to revise our reports. There were a number of recommendations that were made by the panel. We will review these panel findings, the recommendations. We will revise the report. We will submit the report to our director for her consideration to accept or reject the, the recommendations of the advisory panel, which is, this is what this was, was an advisory panel to the director. Um, once the, the director uh, accepts or rejects the advice, the report will be completed, the report will then be released. And what are the implications for policy? Uh, for instance, the FCC has a standard of 1. Uh, exposure standard of 1.6 watts per kilogram. I don't understand what that means, but first of all, tell us what that means, and then uh, what are the implications for that standard based on this study? So, the lo so that's what's called a localized standard. So what it is is 1.6 watts per kilogram is a permitted upper level of exposure to a small piece of tissue, either one gram or ten grams, basically. Um, so it, it's, a, it's an, an allowable amount of radiation that will not heat that one small segment of tissue more than one degree centigrade. During the use so of that's the a phone. thermal standard. It's a thermal standard. Does your study imply that other standards are necessary that are non-thermal? Perhaps. And that can is you a explain recommendation. That? That's a, that will be a consideration of both the Food and Drug Administration, who has jurisdiction over the um, uh, running the, basically the risk assessment mm -hmm. of potential biological effects of radiofrequency radiation, 
and it will also be then considered by the Food uh, Federal Com Communications Commission. What do we call a non-thermal standard? Well, I don't think we have one at the moment, so it would be a biologically based standard rather than a thermal based standard. Could it result in a warning on a phone, like on a cigarette label or something like that, or would the phone industry then change I, their technology? I can't really address that as it's really out of the... Because some of the activists are saying they would like to see changes in technology, warnings, and things like that. It's, it's really out of the realm of my... Right. Uh, it's in the hands of these other health agencies, yes. how they ad address this. And in the hands of the technology industry. Yes. But you expect something will be done with these findings that are serious enough that they cannot be ignored? I think that we need to go through these, these findings. Again, the, one of the most difficult things is understanding the relative exposures. Translating the exposures that we did to whole bodies, the whole bodies of these animals, in a reverberation chamber situation, and relating that type of an exposure to holding a phone against one's head. And there's lots of considerations that have to be. Or holding anything on your hip or, or, or in your pocket for hours. A lot of considerations that are not taken in, into account. in during the course of this meeting in the translation of this information into that standard. Let me ask you this. Could the uh, uh, cell phone industry, whatever they're called, CTIA, I believe their main group, could they challenge this study legally or in some other way where they would ask it to be reopened, would they try to have it revised? Do they have any, or is the study closed, essentially? There is no, uh, this is an independent hazard identification study that will be published and there is no, uh, no uh, uh, way that the, 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 the findings, the findings are the findings. No. But they would change it, presumably they would change the debate because they elevate the level of risk, at least in animals, right? So we would expect to see well, that this we're not talking about risk to animals, but yes, uh, it, would, it would raise the level of the debate. Yes. Okay. Depending on the, on the trans, translation of this information to the human situation. And that's an important translation that has to take place. That's the next step. And that's the job, I guess, of the public health agencies to assess that. Right, and I believe that's where the technology industry, the telecom industry, would get involved in expressing its issues to those industries and telling them why, that, that how to interpret this data correctly. Or, could well, could yeah. well happen. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Cell phones really cause cancer. It's been a question that's dodged researchers for years. Now, but a group of experts are now saying the results of some tests are pretty surprising. Here is consumer editor Susan Copen. Millions, maybe billions of us constantly call, text, click, take pictures, and play on our cell phones. Even the top cellular radiation researchers from around the world have a hard time untethering. But they gathered recently in North Carolina to talk about cell phone concerns and whether they really do increase our chances of developing cancer. The panel voted that the results from years of testing on mice and rats were more significant than originally thought. They say they found clear evidence that phone radiation caused tumors in the hearts of rats, similar to tumors in people. In humans, it's seen in the vestibular nerve in the ear, the acoustic nerve. Um, we found it in the heart, although our uh, animals were exposed in their whole body condition. While a given animal is not making a cell phone call, they are, throughout their short two-year lifetime, getting the same exposure that we would expect people to get in their 70-plus years of life. Activists are now calling for more protection, citing separate studies from France and Italy. Many brain tumor lawsuits going on right now that are waiting for a study like this to prove that people's brain phone radiation. And there are new concerns on the horizon. 5G is about to debut a stronger system of broadband. Some activists say the government has a responsibility to increase regulations. And I think it's also the responsibility of the ones making up the phones to make them as safe as possible. And I'm sure they can do better than what we actually have. Susan Copen, KDKA TV News. And researchers agree that people can minimize any risk by holding the phones away from the body when in use and not putting them in your pocket.